Let's bring in David Bonson, uh, founder, managing partner, and CIO of the Bonson Group. David, it's always great to have you. Um, so I'm listening to Harris's plan as she laid it out on Friday, and I'm, I had a, um, a dental procedure, so, I mean, this just added to my pain. She's <laughs> talking about things like price controls. She's talking about giving $25,000 to every first-time homebuyer that's out there. She's talking about now that they did student debt, she wants to forgive medical debt. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, this is even more progressive than the progressive agenda that the Biden-Harris uh, team implemented when they were in office. So she is basically calculating that there is appetite for this out there, which is, I mean, it's shocking to me, but maybe I'm the one that has a problem. I think we're now seeing a disadvantage to this no primary deal because everyone's thought she's had it easy because she didn't have to go defeat other candidates in a primary. But one of the advantages of a primary is you put all your ideas out there mm. and voters either either say yay or nay, including your bad ones. Mm. Now, these types of ideas have to get vetted. Washington Post, CNN, New York Times hammered her on price controls. Yeah. And I love the headline at Washington Post. If they're going to call you a communist, don't lead with price right. controls. <laughs> um, it's a terrible idea. Some of the bad ideas that float out there are pandering in the political sphere. Mm -hmm. This is not. This is ideological. Well, uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan says you're reading way too much into this. Yeah. You need to stop thinking about it, David. Listen to what she had to say. I think people are, are reading too much into what uh, has been put out there. She sees every American. She understands what people are struggling with and wants to help you keep more money in your pocket. See, I, I don't think you can read into it enough, actually, because she's very vague about all this. But there are big things underlying her policies, and it all points to a bigger government more involved in our lives. It's a very simple question. You know, we do economics. Who's supposed to set prices? Prices are discovered. They're not imposed. She, she can say whatever she wants about people reading into it. I think everyone's for the idea of a middle class having, you know, better quality of life. The issue here is that this is not what it does. Throughout the testimony of history, price controls create shortages. They, they create a black market. They create hoarding. We know these things from people who have studied history. So she is responsible for what she's actually proposed. We're not responsible for reading the black and white letters on the page. She said it. And the FTC getting discretion to go punish grocers for setting prices, right. one of the lowest margin businesses yes. on the planet. They're going to punish them for pricing things excessively. This is totalitarian, but it really is economic ignorance, and it isn't helping the middle class. Mm. When Jackie talks about pain at the dentist, I talk about pain when it comes to our deficit and our debt. That mm. is truly like how it makes me feel. And yet the latest plan from Harris is a $2 trillion deficit. It, but she doesn't have a solution on, on how to close that deficit. Take a listen. You unveiled your some economic policies last week. And can you explain how you're going to pay for those? I think it's a mistake for any person who talks about public policy to not critically evaluate how you measure the return on investment. When you are strengthening neighborhoods, strengthening communities, and in particular the economy of those communities, and investing in a broad-based economy, everybody benefits, and it pays for itself in that way. What? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, look, platitudes are the norm from politicians these days. This is really bad, just saying a return on investment over and over again. Um, I'm very critical of both parties ignoring the deficits and what we've accumulated in national debt. But in this case, I think that uh, ignoring entitlements is malpractice. And I certainly think proposing mm. new spending bills that you're not going to say how you're paying for them. And you say words like return on investment. What it does is it obfuscates this public-private distinction. We can talk about return on investment in my world because we have one. We right. can measure it. We're accountable to it. And the person who bears the risk also achieves the reward. Return on investment in the public sphere is a very disingenuous vocabulary because whoever is taking the risk is not who's receiving the reward. Right. The economic actors are all mixed up. Well, speaking of, she didn't explain how she's going to pay for anything on Friday. And then she said to people, there'll be more on that later. I'm uh -huh. guessing we're not going to get any details at the DNC this week either. But she didn't say to people, when I give $25,000 to first-time homebuyers, prices of homes are going to go up, and that needs to come from a pot of money that you have all put money into. She's not saying to people, when I erase your medical debt, you over there that has no medical debt, you're paying for that. She's not explaining to people how this works. All they hear is, we're going to get free things. Yeah. 
Well, and, and this is the problem. You need a people that have the character to not believe that there's free candy that comes forever without cavities, uh-huh. with, right. with all deference to your dental procedure. The fact <laughs> of the matter is, Jackie, you're exactly right. Uh, we're trying to bribe voters, pander to voters. Um, when Joe Biden came out with the idea about student debt forgiveness, I was against it. I'll be very honest. I'm not crazy about this no tax on tips idea. I don't think there's a lot of specifics there. Both candidates are promoting that. And it just sounds like a way to pander for votes to me. Mm. But no, I think that they have said something that Republicans should be very proud of, or at least the supply side movement since Reagan. Both President Biden and now Harris are saying we will not raise taxes on anyone under 400000 of income. That's uh, not the way we historically define middle class, $399,000 of income. It may be here in Manhattan, but I think around most of the country, a lot of people would think of that level. So she has no way to pay for it. You cannot raise revenue by only taxing people over a million dollars income. She knows it. The left knows it. Honest left-wing economists like Larry Summers know it. Yeah. So ultimately, they're going to do things. She did put it out in her Medicare for All plan in 2019. Yeah. It was transaction taxes on Wall Street and more of a tax on, on Social Security, mm. things like that. That's what they're going to end up doing. David, always great to yeah. see you. Common sense. Thank you. Thanks we so appreciate much. it.